Hello, everyone, and welcome back. Welcome to the show that's cooler and fly to A1 Forever Sports. Uh, added some lighting uh, around here, you know, just doing a little renovations, you know, improvements, progression. That's what it's all about. I am your host, Chris Tipmore. Why settle for less when you can have more with a vision? You dig? We have a few topics, starting with our top 10 lists. And later we'll have some NBA talk. But before we get started with anything, just wanted to give a little, you know what I'm saying? Just a showing of what this is. Yeah, it's the McDonald's All-American. I keep keep a few, you know what I'm saying, in the archives, you know, nothing too crazy. So we're gonna start with some sports news. Yes, we're going to start with some tennis. Yes, yes, tennis. Uh, Rafael Nadal faced rival Novak Djokovic in their 59th meeting overall. Uh, Rafael Nadal emerged victorious from a four hour and 12 minute battle. He won 6-2, 4-6, 6-2, 7-6 in the quarterfinals of the 2022 French Open. So this results in their career head-to-head record, closing the gap even more with Djokovic, 30 wins, Nadal, 29. Congratulations to Nadal and good luck to you for the rest of the way, sir. Uh, Go win that thing, man. Might as well, right? You already don't beat Djokovic. Really doesn't make any sense not to. Go win the thing, but... Without further delay, we have bringing to you now the A1 Forever Sports Top 10 Dunks of the Playoff on your head. Coming in at 10, Jason Tatum with the bow, bow, bow on Brooke Lopez. Excuse me, Brooke. That's probably how he said it, not me. Look at Brooke. Damn, man. Number nine, Spencer Dinwoody did that. Goes to France, finds the former defensive player of the year, and climbs the stifle tower rolling on 26s. <laughs> Another look right here. Boom time. Ugh. Number eight. Cat gets up one time for the hang time. Okay, so spin on Ja, okay, and boom time on Triple J. All right, all right, got it. Cat getting active. Lucky seven, Joel the Troll, soccer bop him on Siakam. Bet you can't say that five times fast. Look at here, y'all. Bop, right on his head. And he lets him know about it, too. You know Joe gonna talk his noise now. Sinister Six, Brandon Ingram with the Yon Stein Me. Ooh, B.I. don't do him so dirty, B.I. don't do him like that. Look at here, bump before boom time, guys. Fabulous Five, Andrew Wiggins down the lane, putting Brandon Clark in the blender. Ooh, man, watch how Clark flies out of the picture. <laughs> Get out my way, little fella. Yeah. One more time. Watch how you go flying. Man, that's funny. I don't care. That's funny. Number four, the four-way. Donovan, Mitchell, the spider. Come fly with me, MJ style. Spider-Man, Spider-Man. Dunking all over Davis Bartan. Nasty. What you talking about, boy? Splitting the defense on your head. On your head. Yeah, you got up, Spider. Moving on. 
the big three. GP, are you with me? Oh yeah, I'm about to boom time on your head. Gary Payton the second. He's not scratching his head, y'all. That's on your head. Woo. See, Jordan Poole, he know. Boom time on your head. Yeah, that's what he's saying. Dynamic two, Andrew Wiggs comes up big. Punched it. Mm. Punched it on Luka Doncic for arguably the best dunk of the playoffs. Move, Luke, get out the way. Get out the way, Luke, get out the way. And Draymond approves too. A1 is Ja Morant putting Beasley on the billboard because the poster is just not enough. Mm. Boom time for real. My goodness, Rumble, young man, Rumble. Hope y'all enjoyed that top 10 as much as I did. Um, that was just my top 10 dunks of the 2022 playoffs on your head. But right before we get into this NBA talk about the Warriors and the Celtics, just want to shine a little light. You know what? Give flowers when you can smell and all that good stuff um, to two superstars. Jimmy Butler. Jimmy Butler averaged 22 and a half points, six and a half rebounds, four and a half assists, and 13 career games in the Eastern Conference Finals. This year, he notched 25.7 rebounds and 3.4 assists, including two 40 burgers, and the second one, the first game seven of the ECF, Eastern Conference Finals. So hats off to Jimmy Buckets. You are a superstar when the lights shine the brightest. Next, shout out to Luka Doncic for making his first Western Conference Finals appearance. Luka Magic averaged 31.7 points, 9.8 rebounds, and 6 assists in this year's playoffs, including a big game in the deciding Game 7 against the Phoenix Suns. So hats off to Jimmy and hats off to Luca, to the stars who come up big, but just came up short just this go round. Well, guys, we finally made it. We're here, NBA Finals. Biggest stage, big dance. I'm very pleased that the two teams that I picked made it, and uh, I know some turbulence throughout but hey we are here and i'm so glad to be here can't wait for thursday game one it's going to be crazy the atmosphere is going to be electric well, i already know we we'll gave you a few uh you know a few stats of the tail of the take or whatnot The Golden State Warriors have made it back to the NBA Finals for the sixth time in eight to 10 years. In the playoffs, the Warriors are averaging 114 and a half points per game, almost 45 rebounds, and are the, the number one team in defense in the league. Get this, y'all. Their counterparts, the Boston Celtics, they're averaging 107 points per game, almost 43 rebounds. And they're the number two team in the NBA in, de in, to in team defense. So this will be the first time since 1996 that the two top teams have played each other in the NBA finals. The last two teams, the Seattle Supersonics and the Chicago Bulls. For those who don't know the result of that, MJ and the Bulls, took down the Sonics four games to two. Game six might. It is what it is. Golden State is seeking their seventh championship in franchise history, while the Boston Celtics are looking to break the tie with the Lakers with their 18th championship.
these teams, man, this matchup is so great for multiple reasons. And I'll give you a few. Um, okay. So for Boston, they had the crazy years with Kyrie. What's here? I say crazy year with Kyrie. You know, they lost to Braun them that year. Then they lost to Milwaukee in 2019. Lost to Miami in the bubble 2020. Then came up short again against Brooklyn last year. But, hey, the Celtics paid everyone back this year. I'm talking about they defeated Miami. They, uh, what, they just, they beat the former champion Milwaukee, defeated the former champion, guaranteeing that we will have a new champion. So after that, of course, they swept Brooklyn and Kyrie. That two birds with one stone, ain't it? Yeah, so, you know, they did all that just to get to the grand stage. Now, the Warriors, they have a nice little backstory themselves. The Warriors lost KD and Klay Thompson to injuries, which resulted in a finals loss to the Toronto Raptors. Yeah, we remember that. The next few seasons, the Warriors, you know, they dealt with the injuries. Uh, what Klay Thompson got another injury. Then with Steph had the broken hand. And then also Draymond, Draymond Green had the injuries. He started having injuries. But they persevered and they made it back to the big dance once again. Like I said earlier, six times out of eight out of ten years. Those two stories are what's going to make this NBA Finals one of the best matchups we've seen in quite some time. I can't wait. And you got Steph, Clay, Jordan, Draymond, Andrew, Kayvon, and you got Marcus, Jason. Man, you know all their names. I ain't got to keep uh, naming them for you. But for me, man, the X factors for the Celtics is going to have to be Marcus Smart and Robert Williams. Yeah. Because, I mean, Al Horford, I know he's going to play his butt off. He, he's been playing his butt off all playoffs, man. I'm actually, as a Hawks fan, I, I mean, I'm happy for Al. You know, I don't, all that stuff that happened with us in the past, you know, we don't put that in the past. It is what it is. And um, I'm happy for him. Hey, man, if y'all win the thing, win it. But I say Marcus Smart and Robert Williams for uh, because Marcus Smart – He's going to have to be playing defense. Um, I see him on Jordan Poole and or Steph, and he's really going to have to play that defensive player of the year. Is really going to have to come out this time. They're going to need him to step up in a big way, like seriously. And um, Robert Williams, I need as healthy as Robert can be. Like that's, that's what I need him to be. I need as healthy as he can be because he's going to have to battle with Kayvon, 22 rebounds in one game, Looney. And um, honestly, y'all, I really see, you know, Marcus running around and being able to kind of like disrupt Steph a little bit. And also, you know, when Jordan Poole comes in, he's going to have to stick to him like glue as well because he's like, you know, almost – a, a smaller mirror version of, of Steph. You know, he, he kind of does some of the same things that Steph does. We see it all the time, you know. So it, it's just, it's just you know, kind of academic like that, right? And Robert Williams, again, he's going to have to battle. He's going to have to defend on drives and everything. And those are going to have to be the two X factors because we know Tatum, Brown, they're going to do their thing. I feel like they should uh, play Peyton Pritchard a little bit more too, just because, I mean, I feel like the man could shoot. Uh, no, I, I know how he was a kind of a liability last series, but I mean, hey, and shoot, I mean, Steph would still have to guard him on the other end too. I say you give him a few minutes, let him uh, catch some shots, let him make some plays, you know, might as well. It's the finals, see what you got. Lay it all on the line. And as for the Warriors, X Factors, I'm going with, I'm going to go with Jordan Poole and Andrew Wiggins. Jordan Poole, 
hey, that man has emerged. That man should be getting the extension on the, on the offseason. He really should. I feel like he's uh, earned it, but he really can earn it even more in these finals right here because they're going to do everything they can to take away Steph and Clay. Because, you know, Steph and Clay, they're going to do their thing. I feel like clay has got confidence. I'm, I'm really happy to see that, you know, because I was worried about how Steph would come back and, and be. And he'll get even more confidence. I feel like next season he'll be, you know, e even more comfortable and uh, feel like, okay, yeah, I'm back. I don't got this season up under me. I got my legs up under me and I can do this. So back to uh the x factors like i said jordan pool for that same fact that they're going to be running around chasing stuff he got to be able to knock down shots make plays make smart plays and not turn the ball over or anything like that it's it's going to fall on him and andrew wiggins i feel like wiggins he's going to play defense but they're going to need a little offense from him too because again they're going to lock in on different players draymond is going to have to uh Man, I ain't going to lie, about 10 points and by eight rebounds or a double-double from Draymond and like, you got yourself a problem. But still, you know, he's going to be battling with Al Horford, I'm sure, and uh, also Grant Williams when he comes in. So I want to see what they're going to be able to do. Again, we know the stars are going to be trying to get taken away. And don't uh, uh, take away from the defense of Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum because they can match up really well with like Andrew Wiggins and Klay Thompson, for example. I mean, Tatum is rangy, just like, you know, Wiggins and everything. They, they, they both can trouble each other. It's going to be a great series. I just can't wait, man. It's going to be great, y'all. And once we see this thing game one, and see where it goes. I feel like it's just gonna build more and more, which is leading me up to my pick. My pick. Uh, which is leading me up to my pick. So, despite what people are saying about, you know, seven games and everything, which this series can very well go seven games. Like, I would not be surprised at all if it go seven games at all because you got one and two going against each other. Superstars on each team, despite what people say about Jason Tatum, I believe he has emerged into a superstar in these playoffs. You already know you got Steph on the other side and you have Clay, his running splash brother. You have Jalen Brown as Tatum's running mate. You have a group of scrappy players. Gary Payton the second will be back as well. So that's some more defense for the Warriors. And I am going to go with Warriors in six. Um, I think that it's going to be a game to where the Warriors kind of like overtake the Celtics a little bit. The experience coaching of Steve Kerr, even though I like the Celtics, man. I really do. The Celtics win this finals. I would not be mad at all about being wrong about any of this. Because, like, honestly, if hypothetically speaking, if it was the Celtics versus the Suns, I'd be picking the Celtics. And if it was against Dallas, I'd be picking the Celtics. But it's the Warriors, and I feel like that championship experience is going to play a factor, a role and definitely adjustments will be made and they will overtake the Celtics in six games. Warriors in six. But the Celtics are going to play hard and they have the makeup to be right back next year. And I believe the Warriors with some fine tuning, they can possibly uh, do the same. But that's another story. That's another topic for another day. That's all the time that we have for now. I'd like to thank you all for watching once again. Thank you to my new subscribers. Thank you to my day one subscribers. I appreciate every last one of y'all. I promise you to my heart. And uh, peace and blessings. 
Positive energy always creates elevation, and that's how you get your peace. Y'all stay safe. Everybody stay prayed up and everything. A1 Forever Sports, Chris Tipmore, Deuces, Trays, and we out. Thank you.